Good morning, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and anybody else watching this video. My name is Derek Lipsky, coming to you live from the office across the hall from my office because there's not a lot of crap on these walls. If we were in there, you'd see it. It just doesn't take away. It wouldn't be believable. You wouldn't believe what I was saying it was true. You'd say, how could this guy live in this squander with all this stuff on the walls and give me advice? So the playing back wall makes it a little bit easier. It's a little bit easy for us to connect. You can stop focusing on all the, the drawings I have on the backboard where you can focus on kid. All right, so the question 10 is the one we're going to talk about today, which is the last question in the series. I hope they've been good. I don't know if anyone's ever watched them. I mean, I saw a couple of hits, but I don't know if it's me that's looking at them. Um, people like this one. It's how do you price a home and, and, and what's your pricing strategies? Okay, so this one is going to be a little intense. Pull up a chair. Yeah, bring it closer. Some popcorn. Make it a Derek Day. Derek Day, DD, double, well, leave that one alone. All right, so now we're gonna go over this question, uh, prices. So on the prices, what we do is we really gotta look at your competition. So <clears throat> when we look at stuff, we wanna try to create value in the eyes of a buyer. So someone goes, wow, there's value. Since there's so many homes to choose from, you really gotta separate yourself from the competition. So what we need to do is, is try to create value. Now, there's only a couple ways I know to create value. You may know some different ways. You can type them in if you do. If you don't, that's fine too. But number one is to, A is probably, or number one is to have a lower price than your competition. So all the homes are the same. How are you going to sell? You got to undercut them a little bit, be under the, under the radar. So if everyone's at four, you want to be at 390 and to show a little more value. So people go, wow, that one's a little better. Offers the same for a lower price. I like it. And, you know, that would be the one they're going to pick. The other option is to offer more features and benefits for the same price. Same scenario, four homes are on the roll. One has a pool with two acres of land, the other ones don't. Hey, that's the one to sell for 400 if they're all the same. So you've got to kind of use those upgrades as leverage but not try to overcharge for them. Now, don't get me wrong, if you put in gold toilets and you got the skies open up every time you open the door and you know it's just a beautiful thing, then obviously we're gonna, we're, we're gonna try to, we're gonna try to compare it to homes that are like that. But when, if you're looking at a home that's 2,000 square feet, two car garage, three or four beds, two and a half baths, I mean, there's pretty much a ton of them out there. You can put your own personal preference inside them. But when we look at it, we look at it as that, as, as one thing. Now, we don't live there. So we're that third party unbiased thing. So we're able to look at pricing of that and, and say, all right, here's your home, here's the other homes, here's where we need to be to sell. Only one home is selling every month. We want to be that home. We want to offer the most for the best price. So when buyers walk in, they go, Oh, wow, this is clear value, I'm making an offer. That's what you want every time. So that's kind of my pricing strategy. <clears throat> and, it, and I use that, and we go over pricing a couple different ways. I mean, I look at price per square foot, I look, I look at list price to sales price, I look at, uh, I'm sorry, list price, I'm sorry, ugh, assess price to sales price, um, I look at basically all the comps that are on the market, I look at appreciation or depreciation since you bought the home, so we're able to chart a graph uh, in your specific town to find out when you bought it in 1991, it was at this price, the average home is selling here. Uh, in 2011, it's here. How much appreciation was that? And kind of what we do is take all those different formulas and we put them together and usually, but not always, but 95% of the time, they will all come together and converge on the same price within five or 10 or $20,000. When you have that sort of nexus of numbers coming together and all saying the same thing, well, it's pretty clear that's the price. Now, people don't like that. Everyone has an idea that their home is better than every other home out there, and that's fine. You know, when you put in the time, the money, and the effort to get your home up to par, you know, you're obviously attached to it. So it's hard for anybody to come in there and say it's worth this. And I've been on plenty of presentations where I haven't got the listing because someone else went in there and goes, oh, man, this house is great. Uh, how much do you want for that? Four fifty? You're giving it away. Let's go five. <clears throat> and I mean, I'll have the facts in front of me, but common sense does not rule in this situation. When I hear someone else telling more money, they're just like, oh, we could do so much more of this. They start thinking, the problem is that's phantom money. And what the agent pretty much does is that A, doesn't know their business, or B, knows their business and uses this attack approach, which is basically list them high and then beat them up week after week after week and keep coming for you for price reductions. So that being the case, you want to be careful of that because, you know, they're hard enough to sell the ones that are priced right let alone try to sell an overpriced listing. And in this market, if you're overpriced by even a dollar, forget it. Like people say, well, they can make me a crazy offer. They're not doing crazy offers like that. They, they're making those kind of offers on the homes that are priced right, not the ones that are overpriced. So if you've got four homes on the market, one's at 420, the other three at 400, and one's at 390, 
and they're all the same, which one do you think a buyer's going to make an offer on? The 390 house all day. They don't even going to bother trying to get you to go back to the level here because you're in fantasy land, not reality. So a lot of these homes that sell are agents that have taken these listings from somebody else who had it originally. The seller got frustrated. It was on the market for six, eight months to a year. Couldn't get the job done. And they approach and go, Derek, I'm ready to sell. Price it right. Great. Let's get started. And sometimes they say, I can't sell that low because they've taken so much time and the market's dropped so much that they've actually missed the market. And either they owe too much and they can't or they, their dreams of buying another house cash are gone. You know what I mean? You're not going to do that. You go, I'm 50. I want to buy my next house cash. Guess what? You should have done that five years ago. Here's what we got today or plan B. Stay where you're at. You're the highest bidder for that house. Keep it. You know, wait 10 more years and hope that the market turns around. I can assure you the market hopefully will come back at some point, but I don't know if it's going to go back to 04, 05, 06 prices. That was just kind of wicked. It's the highest we've ever had it. Could it go back? Yeah. I don't have a crystal ball. Is it likely to? I don't know, man. Not, at least not soon anyways. I mean, it's got to, we've got to get out of this funk. That's another thing you guys got, got to work on if you're out there. Mindset. You've got to go in there. Someone asked you if you're the best agent. You're damn right I'm the best agent. Let's get it done. If you're second-guessing yourself, your skills... You are not the right agent. You, someone asked me, do you think you're better than him? You're damn right I'm better than him. I get the job done. I will work my tail off to get it done. And you can watch me check in every morning and check out. I'm here from 7.30 to 7 o'clock at night every day working. Not just putting in an MLS and at the water cooler on the phone going, man, did you see American Idol last night? Can you believe that guy got booed off the stage? Crazy. No, I'm on the phone trying to find buyers and sellers. And I know this is getting wacky, but this is the last episode. So I'm trying to encompass everything. And yes, if you're asking the question, if it's that crazy for you, this is a flannel shirt. No, I am not a lumberjack. This is sort of the rotation today in the, in the, in the, uh, the wardrobe. Today is lumberjack day, so I'm trying to, trying to get that going. That about wraps up everything I have. I mean, I hope you guys have enjoyed the series. Again, you can click on these buttons below, and they're going to take you back to the other questions or other crazy things that I have about how I get homes sold. But this series is just geared to ask questions of your next realtor. You know, what is your pricing strategy? How does it work? How effective is it? You know, how close are you getting to your price point? Are you getting like 99%? My, last year, my average was 98.7% of asking from list price. What does that mean? I basically get within 2% of my asking price on average. That's pretty good. Most people are about 93, 92, and those are good agents. The other ones are more like 80, 85. So what does that mean for you? If I list your home for 100 grand, I tell you it's worth 100, we're going to get pretty, pretty much close to 98,000. The other agents are going to get you close to 80. There's a big gap between that. And so the reality is the truth hurts sometimes, but it's the thing you need to find out if you've got to move forward for your family. At the end of the day, if I'm not doing my job right, it's sort of, I don't know. It should be what should be done. I mean, I, if you guys come to me as an, and ask me as an expert to give you an idea of what I think the home is worth, I have to give you my honest opinion because I don't want to be told false information if I'm asking for that and, and have ideas my home is worth this and I can make this kind of a move when that's not the case at all. I'm only going to have to go backwards or not sell at all. So you've got to make the best decision for your family. And I know going into these listings that I may not get the listing because they can't make their move financially, and that's okay. Well, if they make it in four weeks, four days, four months, or four years, I want to be the guy to help them. But the only way I can get to that point is to be honest up front with them and say, here's the price today if you want to sell. You make the decision for you and your family. You know, I, I, If you want to get started, I want to show you how I can help you get there. But the biggest hurdle we have on these CMAs is going over that price right away. And then the other things are commission and in terms of how we get the home sold. You want to pick those things. So hopefully these have helped. Any questions, comments, give me a call, 508-326-5320. Send me an email. All the information is encompassed in this. Uh, if you look at the information list, it's all in there. My website, my email, Facebook, whatever you guys want. Twitter, follow me. Whatever you guys want to do. I hope you enjoyed them. And I might take the next one. Maybe I'd become your house. I don't know. Later.